Hey there everybody, this is your host Sam here from the Samuel Plays Brass channel. Thanks so much for joining in today. To any old hats in the audience, welcome back, and to any new hats, welcome aboard. Stay tuned to learn more about the King 1117 Ultimate Series Marching B-flat Trumpet. According to the Con Selmer website, designed primarily for outdoor use, the King 1117 utilizes strategic bracing and unique acoustical design to make the ultimate powerhouse trumpet. With its oversized bell, slightly slanted bell bend, and large bore size, this trumpet is built to project all the way to the press box. This particular 1117 is silver plated with nickel inner slides and nickel plated valves for supposed faster action and better durability. The 1117's bore is a little bit larger than the industry standard like on this box strad B flat of 0.459 inches. The King's is 0.462, which is also the same bore size that Bach uses on their large bore horns, whether it's their C trumpets or their D E flat trumpets like this one a little further to my left. The bell on the King is 5 and an eighth inches. Their website mentioned it was a little bit oversized for the sake of some extra resonance and projection. I should also add a note about the lingo that the Con Selmer website uses to describe the 1117 bell. They not only call it a 5 and an eighth inch bell, they call it a dynamically angled, seamless yellow brass bell with soldered bead wire. That is quite a mouthful, but Essentially, there's some acoustical treatment going on to hopefully allow this trumpet to project a little bit better out on the field. And although I'm by no means a connoisseur of instrument cases, I would like to mention that the King 1117 comes in a really awesome stackable case. It's got these little divots in the top and four legs on the bottom to match up, and it honestly makes perfect sense. If you're stacking a bunch of these up in a trailer, you want them to fit together nicely, and that's what the King Company decided to do. Like I said, this is King's idea of a marching band trumpet, meaning it's supposed to excel out on the open field. You're supposed to be able to project well with it, and you can't really hear your sound reflected back at you, so you obviously want a trumpet that's, you know, right on the money and projects well into the open. It still has a huge dynamic range. It doesn't just play extremely loud, but it also has a nice soft side. The sforzandos and forte piano crescendos on this instrument are exceptional. I absolutely love them. And that's great for drum corps type stuff where you want that sudden, you know, cut in volume and then that gradual build back up. It's a really, really cool effect and it works really well on this instrument. Now despite the intonation of the horn overall being fairly okay, some of the upper register slotting is really not what you expect it to be, which is interesting. It's not often the case with these horns that I have a problem with their high register, but especially around double F sharp or double G, even though the notes are definitely easy to hit, you can just back off and they pop right out and they have a lot of ping on the attack when you articulate them, they just don't sit that well. I had gripes with almost all of the high notes on this horn. Double G was way weirder than it is normally for me. Double G sharp and A, forget it. Double B flat and B were, you know, iffy but, but decent. And then double C was oddly nice, which is the inverse uh, experience I have with many horns in the high register. But all those other notes below it were kind of screwy for some reason. With that said, the middle to high register is pretty nice on this instrument. The traditionally flat E partial is not too bad on this instrument, and it's very malleable, so even if it does sit a little bit flat for you, you can bend it right up to pitch. And the G right on top of the staff, and the G sharp and A right above it that are traditionally pretty sharp, also can come down pretty easily. So in the middle of high register, assuming you're not playing double Gs and As all day, the notes actually slot pretty well. With my initial playing impressions of the King 1117, I was really amazed. This trumpet stood right up to the Cancel 103 that I've reviewed earlier in the past. You can check the video up there in the card for more information on that horn. But I was really amazed because I'd had kind of lower expectations for the King than the Cancel, frankly, and so I was really pleasantly surprised. And listening back to the recordings, I was also surprised by the sound. Just maybe not as pleasant. You expect marching trumpets to have some brightness and edge to their sound. Just naturally, in that open space, you need a lot of high overtones to have that carrying capacity for a trumpet sound to be able to be heard across the field and back, you know? So, we expect these things. The trouble is, the King 1117 is very bright and pointed, almost to the point of shrillness. 
even with the huge Shoki 20 mouthpiece that I was using on it, I was really surprised by just how bright the sound was. This I probably should have expected because it's a commonality among almost every King trumpet I've played. The 600 series student model, which I've played several of from different eras, is definitely stuffier than this one, but also has that really bright and almost tinny sound, frankly, so thankfully the 1117 isn't quite as bad in that regard. But even the upper end King trumpets, like their silver flare, definitely sound bright in my hands and are really tough to sort of mold towards a darker sound. Again, it's understandable for a marching horn, but nonetheless, after being amazed by how balanced the harmonics were on the Cancel 103, I was kind of surprised in the opposite direction by this one. You definitely should listen to it from a good distance on the field, and that's how it'll sound best. It sounds best in a large section, and in definitely a large band with a full range of frequencies from the, you know, a fairly solid mid-range in the mellows to a strong low end on the bass end of things. It definitely isn't really meant to play on its own, it's, it's almost strident. But on that note, I did sing some praise for the Cancel 103 being a good mariachi horn. I will say the 1117 is probably better as a result of all this. So trying to juggle all the information and opinions I've thrown at you in the past few minutes, what are my final Crash Horse thoughts on the King 1117 Ultimate Series Trumpet? Despite my few qualms that I have with the instrument, I really do enjoy playing it. It's definitely a fun one, and it definitely performs well out on the field, even if it's less of an all-around horn, I suppose. It's a fairly approachable one, I would say, compared to some marching brass. There are definitely some marching brass instruments that are temperamental or fussy or have a really steep learning curve, and as an incoming marcher, it can be really tough to find one that's sort of tailor-made for you, so I would consider the 1117 to be a very versatile bet. Of course, there's no one shoe that fits every basketball player, and thusly, there's no one trumpet that fits every marching band trumpet player, but in any case, I think this is definitely a good one to start out on. It looks great and performs great, I'm sure, on the field, and it's definitely more affordable than some professional quality instruments. It's got fairly balanced intonation, like I said, at least up until double G. Overall, it's a joy to play, even in an indoor space. So, with that said, I hope you've learned something, and I hope you've enjoyed this review on the King 1117. If you have, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. If you find you're not subscribed to the channel, like a lot of my usual viewers actually aren't, consider subscribing down below. It's a small gesture with a huge impact. It'll keep me making these types of reviews, and it'll keep you notified when I release these types of reviews. In the meantime, you can find some older ones up in the playlist in the card. This has been Samuel Plays Brass reviewing the King 1117. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.